Hello, my friends. Um, <laughs> uh, I thought I'm gonna do this movie. I think it's a very, very important movie. This this stuff is is important. I think because nobody says anything about it. And uh, Ukraine, for instance, Ukraine is on the brink of the war. Um, Poroshenko suggested that Russia builds military along the Ukrainian border. Uh, they're getting ready for invasion on Ukraine. Um, if Poroshenko said that, it's definitely 100% de facto is a fact about what's going on. Now, I'm going to give you a little my account about um, what I got information personally from Vladimir Putin, from Medvedev, from Shoigu in respect to invasion on Ukraine, future invasion in Ukraine. Uh, I'm going to reveal to you exactly what the plan is. Oh, uh, this is this is just uh, a fact, really a fact. What I'm going to tell you right now, and it is also related to situation in Poland. Very interesting. Interesting enough how these things are so related with one another. Uh, basically, the plan of Vladimir Putin is to invade Ukrainian coast. Um, get a portion of Ukraine that is using as a second language also a Russian language. Um, now you go to the map and see that for yourself what that would be. His plan is basically to take away from Ukraine coast, Black Sea, entirely. It would not only be that he would connect uh, Crimea with land, as Poroshenko suggested, but the greater plan would be actually to cut uh, Ukraine entirely from the coast. This is his number one plan. Um, that would create crisis for the Vladimir Putin. But this is really insider information, okay? Uh, internal Russian crisis. By the way, I don't know how much you have noticed, but there was a whole set of senior officials that Vladimir Putin got rid of it. Uh, there was a whole bunch of people recently was also news that was released. He just fired them. He just got rid of the people basically that uh, not that he would deem that these people would be a threat. It's called a social engineering. It's called the purification of the Russian state. I already have explained very well that Putin has uh, in plan to create um, you know, to clean the state, to, to make the state like, how can I say, a neo-Nazi state. Probably that would be uh, like the best description of that. Uh, it's, it's a difficult thing to do actually from the point of view that Russia just 70 plus something years ago have fought uh, neo-Nazi Germany. Now it's exactly the, the opposite situation. The top of the Russian state is pro-neo-Nazi, they, they have, uh, every year they have this uh, show, they have this display over there in the Moscow Square, uh, but this is just the uh, uniforms you see that differ from reality, basically, and reality is exactly what I have suggested. Uh, what I'm going to refer to as turnover of the senior officials around Vladimir Putin is war, their war against micro cameras. Uh, Vladimir Putin got a special class, private class in the United States of America from George W. Bush personally on his ranch in Texas. Now we go back all the way back to 2006, before that, when these people were meeting 2007 and so on. And they, they agreed to it. George Bush gave him a very good background on how to get rid of the people that could possibly cause him a trouble, how to test them, how to find out who the people are, and what tools exactly to use to identify these people properly. So the cleanup startup within uh, FSB, KGB, former known as KGB agency first, when he assured that he's got like complete control over that, uh, they implanted these people with all kinds of devices to find out exactly and certain issues so they could come to 
so he could get exactly you know the feedback on how dangerous to have certain people around uh, people that could possibly conflict his well that this is really a Nazism this is really a fascism uh, this is just a, a, a extreme extreme hatred uh, toward other Slavic groups basically is even Slavic groups is how I see it as I mean between Germans and British there is there is like a it's it's like written it's not written but it's like it's a motto it's a post-world war ii motto is like no brotherly wars ever again no conflict between brothers ever again but when it comes to the world of the slavic affairs we have the situation that we are experiencing right now big time in eastern europe uh it, it wasn't only for 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 crimea vladimir putin knows that it's going to be get bloody really really bloody in ukraine uh, and he doesn't mind because in the background, folks, this is insider information. In the background, there is a country you now called as a Belarus. Formerly, this was a republic of Soviet Union, Belarus. But now, actually, that's a republic which is under total control of the Russia. Think about it like an uh, independent republic that does nothing but pain a servitude taxes collection everything everything goes like you already started sometimes in 2000 2001 they started to squeeze the belarus state totally like all the money taxes like the belarus people would work everything would just go to moscow for the war against ukraine basically belarus whether they like it or not they had to finance this war okay uh, coming war in in a, in a, in a Ukraine. This is war is gonna is gonna develop into a real war. You're gonna see this is gonna be bloody thing. Uh, I don't think that Russia is gonna win this one. I think it's gonna be very costly. It's gonna be very painful. Uh, but his plan is actually to do exactly what I have suggested, and as of up to date. I have not seen really any any kind of assistance, real assistance from the West that they would actually go and pay. Uh, you know, they would actually support this Ukrainian military, which is totally. When it comes to arms, uh, they are. You know, when you when you consider the the stuff that Americans have given to the Russians, uh, like. I'm not going to say the newest technology, but really updated technology compared to what the Soviet Union used to have. The Ukrainian military is really not matched for this. So I don't know if it's going to develop, hopefully, uh, that Ukraine would eventually get some form of something, some kind of assistance to to fend off this enemy, because it's, it's insane. This enemy kills Russian people in Russia. About 20% of the population, Russian population, is like on almost on less than nothing really they just subsist from month to month like on 140 dollars less per month i mean it's it's a disaster over there in russia itself but this is the money that is used it's it's getting ready that putin did invest it into war with ukraine he invested tremendously and they're getting ready for it and that's exactly is the plan which at one point is going to become very unpopular but what's going to happen is the mainstream media what they're going to do is they're going to keep him afloat they're going to be like oh vladimir accomplished he managed to it doesn't matter how many people is going to be killed uh thrown out of the homes turned into a refugees it's going to be bad as a last resource vladimir putin is going to use is going to be a belarus and what that's going to give him, like a leverage, like what's going to happen is tanks are going to roll straight into the Belarus with permission, really, with the Belarus government of Mr. Lukashenko. Uh, and uh, that actually is going to, again, kind of raise the popularity to him to... You want to say this to the acceptable levels within the Russian population, so they're not going to overthrow him, give him a hot tea or something like that. Yeah, that actually is the plan. So you see, I am, I know this stuff, I know about it. 
I met these people, we know each other very well, these people have disclosed me a whole bunch of things, uh, gave me the whole, the whole plan, and if I would ever go forward with it, that I would be a knowledge even as a trader, although I'm not a Russian, uh, I am from Slovenia, um, and for quite some time I have eventually bitten their bait, favored them, promoted them, till I, I realized that this is, this is just, I'm not going to say a bad idea, but the whole idea is just really the worst possible thing that can happen to the world of Slavic affairs and even in the world, to the world on general because it, this is going to be used as by West as a leverage option for options that are, go, that are going to use in the Mideast, um, South America, Africa and so on. It's coming back folks. Uh, so yeah, the senior officials that, that were sent by Vladimir Putin, you have no idea that probably the worst weapon exists today are a micro cameras that, that stuff that can point out pinpoint the people that needs to be eliminated from the system so you can go on with your agenda it's actually such an easy thing to do for officials like that unfortunately this soviet people the soviet uh, uh officials from the soviet times from the old times they're not familiarized they, they don't they, they people can actually it's it's micro cameras this is like this is like it's hard to imagine how sophisticated this stuff is and it doesn't matter what kind of official you are what you are what your rank is uh you do go out of the room you go to you go to another location whatever it is that you do and uh, you know, they just use these gadgets to just get people like this and take advantage of it, and that's it. And you can turn the system around like, like you wouldn't believe how easy this thing is to do. Um, regarding the Poland, I'm shocked. I am shocked about the Poland. I see the news, and one, on one side I see the news that U.S. is going to increase the presence of troops in Poland. That Poland is inquiring, asking about more U.S. troops in Poland. But I really cannot help myself, on the other hand, to note also the latest news, which was released in respect to Poland, that Poland, in fact, refused American nukes. United States of America was going to station nuclear bombs to deter away a Russian threat inside of the Poland for the sake of the Polish nation. And Polish politicians went ahead and have simply declined to accept this nuclear arsenal from United States of America, which already is in Germany, in Italy, and all over the Europe. Uh, that actually tells me quite a lot about it. I would say like this, if I was a Polish politician, I would say go ahead, station the nuclear bombs in Poland, because of course, nuclear bombs already are in Kaliningrad and so are in Belarus. They're known as a silos nukes that can be stored and they are stored literally in the factories, in the warehouses. Uh, very easy to assemble and the only thing you see is the roof opens and nukes just fly out of the warehouses, factories and so on. You would not even know they are there. Belarus has nukes, I know so. It's insider information too. And I am 100% that nukes already are in Kaliningrad. I know 100% for Belarus. Uh, I don't know 100% for Kaliningrad, but Kaliningrad is part of the Russia that borders even Poland. Uh, and so this would be like shocking that they would not have. You know, when it comes to Russia and treaties and stuff like this, there are no treaties with the Russia. There are no, uh, uh, you can sign the treaties and whatever it is that you want to do. But, uh, you know, Russia is not as sophisticated as United States of America. They not I'm going to have a tendency, but they are actually forced, they are compelled uh, to stick with that type of already now conventional type of uh, weaponry, whether I like it or not. 
Americans have the systems, highly sophisticated systems that can fend off, that can, um, you know, stop uh, the attack. But Russians, they they have to resource themselves. They, Russia had to still use this as 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 somewhat as some kind of deterrent, you know, even for the cost of creating. Uh, ecological catastrophe wherever the case would be I don't know how much you would actually succeed with that but uh, you know uh, West has really really uh, sophisticated technology when it comes to interception of uh, missiles Russia also has sophisticated uh, its arsenal but not to that level uh, anyways um, if I were a Polish politician, at least I would demand this type of weaponry to be stationed in the country till I would assure that I have uh, this type of weaponry myself. Uh, basically, not, not that I would any longer depend on American weaponry, but I would ask them to station this type of weaponry till I would at least uh, develop this type of weapon weaponry uh, of my own till I would have my own I would have under complete commands uh, you know I can kind of understand concern that Russians Poles Slavic people we are related to one another I can I can totally accept that and that actually stuff like this could be misused but under the situation we're in under the threat in respect to Ukraine and what's happening in Ukraine and what is happening against the Baltic states Russia threatens with invasion not only in Ukraine but also against the Baltic states against Latvia Lithuania Estonia uh, against the Poland itself you have not heard one because Poland is inside of the NATO it's a bigger country it's inside of the NATO and it's not as related to Russia is um, as Ukraine is but again just because of that and just because of the stuff that I have stated because of what's happening in Ukraine because what is about to happen in Ukraine and with the border and because of the border with the Belarus it's insane that the Polish government declined to accept this type of arsenal as a, as a protection as a, as a source of countermeasure as a source of stability in this part of the world it it totally pinpoints what type of politic is uh, in Poland what exactly is going on uh, Poland uh, seems to completely disregard the Ukrainian also Ukrainian uh, example from the past like let's say Ukraine used to have nukes this is a fact once they gave nukes away and they did they returned them back to the Russia in return they got invaded by the Russia and now they're about to pay even bigger price so uh, the Polish politic again when it comes to this kind of decisions uh, in 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 this times to me this doesn't sound like legit it doesn't sound right to me uh, you're gonna increase the military uh, US military presence in Poland troops well what exactly are troops gonna do against this the nukes tell me about this troops against the nukes uh, Putin is along the Ukrainian border he is not only increasing the number of the troops but he is also uh, he also brought with him nukes so this is really really a good question for the Polish government Polish government sells to the Polish people that they decline offer to you from United States of America well because we're related to the Russians and we're just afraid that they would do that stuff but who is the bigger threat right now uh, to stability in this part of the world to the to the world stability because this is stuff that concerns other parts of the world right now who is bigger threat right now is it United States of America or is it Russia or is a neighbor Russian a, a Russian neighbor that already took Crimea that already caused uh, war over there in the eastern part of Ukraine they took the Donetsk and so on I mean this is just really a question as far as I'm concerned uh, as far as it concerns the US troops me personally I would give ultimatum to the Polish government either you're gonna accept nukes 
or there will be absolutely no troops. You are completely on your own. It's so as this. Either you're going to do the sound, the rational thing, and you're going to start to act like a nation uh, that wants to be a sovereign, that wants to be free, uh, or uh, you should just go ahead and uh, I don't know. Maybe you want to start like, uh, you know, after Belarus, you may just want to, as well as mine, uh, get ready, uh, you know, to become uh, back, to assemble back to the USSR. I have no idea what, what exactly, how the Polish politics sees this. Uh, they host right now this NATO meeting and stuff like this. Uh, but, you know, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a some kind of uh, partner that you could say, uh, that they're like interested in, like in stability in this part of the world because being a NATO member does not only concern your country it also concerns countries that are next to you because you support you're supposed to support other countries you're supposed to provide a backup for for your uh, you know for other member states for other countries you're supposed to give them a backup and frankly I don't see I don't see it uh, what kind of a backup is this? Like, what, what kind of message is this to uh, to Ukraine that is dealing right now with this kind of threat? Okay, I just wanted to say this: there is a plan. Uh, it is happening. Vladimir Putin most likely will take uh, militarily on Ukraine. There will be a war, and his popularity is going to be damaged. But to repair the damage, he's going to use a, as a leverage. He's going to use a Belarus and that's going to make Russia a little bit bigger on the map and uh, this is basically how he's going to use this to uh, survive on the political stage and then the whole thing is going to continue to develop also in other directions parallel to this after that uh, most likely was it going to come up other politicians well by they're going to say well the Russians did this or we can do it too and so on and so forth you know it's all connected with one another and it's happening all right, that's all I wanted to say. Uh, thanks for watching this video. I can't help uh, not to comment news like this. I mean, any nation, uh, any nation would be more than glad, would be interested in, 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 in this type of protection. You know, basically the U.S. gives this type of uh, a backup to Poland, actually offer them uh, this type of protection. This is like a VIP protection, like the highest protection. The highest one possible that gives you a time, it gives you a timing to develop the weapons of your own. It literally places you on a stage. It's like a pre-step toward having your own weapons. You know, it's like on your resume. I did this. I got the knowledge. I got, uh, I got, um, you know, experience in this field. I did handle this. I can handle that. And the next thing is you get this stuff yourself. You inquire about this kind of technology and Poland just is not interested in it. I don't know how Poland see uh, itself. Uh, I should say how Poland see other nation um, see one as some kind of uh, sovereign nation, as independent nation, nation that wants to uh, create uh, own destiny, own... own uh, you know, own politic that wants to engage uh, in world under own rules and stuff like this. This is this is just like this. All right. Thanks for watching this video. Till next time.